Hello beautiful friends, I am back with another process to share for you as part of the Maggie Holmes Monday series. This is a series that I participate in with my friend Gwen and I will leave a link to her channel down in my description box below so that you can go and check out what she's creating. So this is a series where we dive through our stash of Maggie Holmes products and upload videos on a Monday when we have the capacity to do that. I did take a small bit of a breather just to spend some time with my family over the month of February but I am back and I have this fabulous new layout to share with you today I did show you there I have some photos of my daughter which were taken in March last year that I'm scrapping and I'm using a cut file from the cut to use store and I'll leave a link to that down below as well and I am once again using the beautiful marigold collection for this video now I am actually scrap lifting myself there was a layout that I completed mm, probably I'm not sure maybe a year ago or so it's not something that I think featured on my YouTube channel. It's just something that I created for fun and it was a real boy themed layout but I loved the design so I decided that I was going to recreate it here. So the process that you're watching me do here is yeah I'm scrap lifting something that I have created previously. Let me know in the comments below is that something that you do? Do you, do you like to go back and scrap lift layouts that you have enjoyed creating or layouts that you like to do you have a go-to design maybe? I'd love to hear your thoughts and how you approach these things. So you just saw me there adding some mixed media onto my white cardstock. For this, I used the Vicky Booten, uh, I think it's called the Foundations cardstock, which I've got a couple of packs of that in my stash. And this is the first time I've used it and I didn't have to apply any gesso. So I was really impressed at how well that held up to the watercolor that I added there. Now I'm just going to add some mats, some, sorry, some layers behind my photo and I've chosen this bold or this bright it's a it's more of a mustardy color I think on camera it's coming up a little bit green but in real life it's closer to a mustardy color so I'm adding that directly behind my photo because they are black and white I just wanted to add some color behind them to really help them to pop out against the background so I'm piecing together I really didn't think too well when I was using this six by eight piece of paper to mat those three photos I didn't think it out very well so I had to piece together the the mat for the the last photo there but I thankfully I put a bit more thought into it before I use that black and white patterned paper which you can see off to the side and I'm using my distressing tool here to rough up the edges I think it is time for me to get a new distressing tool because I'm finding that this one here it either doesn't really give me the textured edge that I look or it tears the paper in two so I've had this for such a long time I think the blade inside is probably pretty dull now so I'm on the hunt for a new one but they seem to be far more difficult to find now than I remember them being before perhaps they're just not trendy anymore in the scrapbooking world I'm not sure but I will try and hunt one down in stock somewhere so that I can continue my love of distressed edges without destroying the papers that I'm using. So as I'm chatting away here and you can see me just adding a, they're fairly thin borders um, that I'm adding to these photos and I'm going to distress those edges again because my layout is going to have lots and lots of layers. So the design that I've chosen to, the design that I've chosen to scrap lift for myself, it had lots of layers along the background. So that includes mixed media. And I will come back in and add a little bit more mixed media in just a moment. Uh, the cut file is going to create another layer and I will also use some washi tape as well as a couple of paper layers behind my photo. So I've chosen this pink patterned paper for my page mat. If you have watched any of my previous videos, you will know that this is something that I almost always do to my pages because I am such a big fan of working with a white background. I do like to add just that little bit of interest. And for me, a page doesn't feel entirely finished if it's not framed in some way so if I don't add the mat so the the patterned paper mat or border to the page I will add some stitching or some hand-drawn lines or something like that because for me for a page to feel finished I like to have it a frame sort of a frame around it that's just my personal preference 
Now this is also something that featured on the layout that I'm scrap lifting but it includes some hidden journaling. So if you're like me and you have some of these glassine bags that you've kept stashed away, maybe you've had some products that have come in them, maybe you've purchased the bags, maybe they've come in a kit, but I've got lots and lots of these glassine bags and I don't always reach for them. But for this one, I am going to include it both as a layer behind my photos and also as a place to hold my journaling. So this particular bag has got a beautiful um, polka dot embossed pattern on it. And although it was um, the right width for what I was looking for, it was just a little bit too long and it would have stood up too far behind my photo layers. So I've just trimmed the top of that bag down using my the, the pink piece of patterned paper there that is going to be the, um, the base for my photo photos to sit on and I've just used that as a guide to trim that bag down and then I've got some plain white cardstock that came out of my scrap stash and I'm cutting that down into a tag and I've used my corner chomper there from We Are Memory Keepers and my little power punch to punch out the hole. Off camera I've taken that away and I have added some journaling using my typewriter. So you can see now I have added my white paper to my pink photo mat and I have also added some stitching on my machine and I used a pale pink cotton thread for this one. And now I'm coming in with a little bit more mixed media. So I'm using this Prima Light Texture Paste. This is honestly such a beautiful product to work with if you're looking for some really nice, soft, subtle textures on your background. It is, yeah, it's just, it's lovely. I really, I'm so in love with this product and it, it's a huge jar. So it's going to last me a long, long time. And I'm using a, a scripted um template there it's really nice really soft and subtle and i'm just showing you a little close up there of how that background looks and that is that's essentially if you're thinking about layering it up i've essentially created two layers there i've got my background i've got my watercolor then i've got my texture paste now i'm going to come in with two more layers so i have this gold foil striped washi and i intentionally chose a washi that was quite wide because i wanted to make sure that you could see it there peeking under all of my layers and it is quite a subtle effect but it is there and i really think that it helps to build the background on my page there so I was just playing around with the placement thankfully with washi it's fairly easy to pull back up again um, now I did think about adding some adhesive to the back of the washi because it is sitting on some mixed media and if you are familiar with using mixed media on your backgrounds you will know that adhesives don't always stick very well but the reason I didn't add any wet adhesive to the back of the washi is because I knew that I would be adding this um, cut file this cut floral over the top with some wet adhesive and that will help to keep that washi adhered down in place on the page okay so with those layers down on my background i'm ready to start building the bulk of the page which is going to be these photos on a block here um, and then building some embellishments around it so as you as i said i'm using this glassine bag both as a layering element so to help add some visual interest to my layers that are sitting behind my photos. And also you can see now that I've tucked that tag in there, which I also stitched a border around the tag just to be um, bring in a little bit of cohesiveness with the border on the page. So it's a layering piece and it's also a fantastic home for my journaling. And as you can see on this layer, I did have quite a bit of journaling that I added here. It's just a little personal note from me to my daughter, which I hope at some point in the future she will read. And I have stuck down that piece of pink patterned paper, which is the base that my photos will sit on. It is not straight and that was intentional um, because I wanted to yeah, give a little bit more interest and I didn't want this to be a super boxy and linear page. So I'm adding that on a slight angle and now I'm going to tuck a few pieces uh, over to either side of that block there just to help to build it out a little bit before I stick my photos down. So these tags came from one of the cut apart sheets 
which is part of the Marigold collection. I sat down and I cut all of those out and then just to make good use of them, I've cut some of them in half and I will use the other halves on other projects in the future. I also grabbed a couple of florals from the ephemera pack. This is not a super floral heavy layout, um, even though it is an icon that features quite heavily in the collection. I intentionally didn't want to go crazy tucking all the florals in on this particular layout. So I have added just a piece of chipboard. It's something that came in some packaging. I've added, just trimmed it down and added that to the back of each of my photos just to give them a little bit of dimension. There's not too much dimension, just enough to lift them off from that block background and help them to stand out, but without adding too much extra bulk to my page. And now I am ready to do a little bit of embellishing. It's not super embellishment heavy. I'm finding that that is tending to be more my style at the moment. I'm not going crazy with building large embellishment clusters right now. I'm sure that will change again in the future. But I did have want to have just a little piece down the bottom in the center of the page. And that's just to help add some balance because I have got this really large visual visually heavy piece sitting in the middle of the page. Putting that smaller bit down the bottom there just helps to balance the page out a little bit and to um, yeah, add to the overall aesthetic of the layout. I've used some of the chipboard pieces and I'm really making an effort to pull more of those out because I think I tend to hoard them and I end up with a whole bunch of pieces on my chipboard sheets that don't end up getting used. So I've used tucked a few of those in on either side of that photo block. I also had these wood veneer kind of florally, circle-y things, not sure what you call that design. And I just grabbed some white acrylic paint and I've painted them white. And I'm adding those in three places around the layout. I've cut that one in half because I don't actually need the whole piece. So I've just tucked that in underneath on the left there. Now I'm ready to come in with my title. So I have this gold foil alpha and it's a really matte foil. I think it's an old Dear Lizzie product um, that I pulled out from my stash and I'm adding some wet adhesive behind it because as you know, sometimes the adhesive on these stickers just doesn't stand up against the test of time. So adding a little bit of extra wet glue helps them to stick down. And now unfortunately I didn't hit record when I came back to add in the rest of my title, but that is just using a white foam alpha which I've tucked in on either side to create the title my amazing girl and I also grabbed a few of the extra bits from that gold foil alpha set and I'm using those just as embellishment pieces to feature that little cluster down the bottom and also on either side of my photo block I do add some nouveau drops off camera which you will see in the close-up photos that are coming shortly but as always thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day